We have just finished visiting the Vicky B shipwreck and we're on our way now to visit the Lesline M shipwreck which is just a short swim away. Slowly the ship begins to appear out of the background haze. The visibility as far as I est could estimate is about 60 feet uh, on this particular day. The Lesline M ship is an old freighter cargo it has a length that varies depending on who you ask. In one, it was said to be 55 meters or 180 feet, while in another, it was specified as 46.7 uh, meters or 154 feet. I kind of suspect that uh, it is towards the lower end, the actual size, uh, somewhere in around the 154, 160 feet mark. Our dive operator, Scuba Steve, listed the ship as 167 feet or 51 meters. At our depth here, we're swimming at about 65 feet of water. The water temperature here is a beautiful 27 degrees Celsius or 81 degrees Fahrenheit. And this is mid-February. There is no real thermocline here um, where there's a difference in temperature as you go deeper. Uh, of course, the surface, if you were snorkeling uh, at the surface, it might be, you know, one or two degrees uh, warmer at the surface. In fact, a few days earlier, I had been at another reef uh, down at about 94 feet. My dive computer was still recording uh, temperatures of 27 degrees Celsius or 81 degrees Fahrenheit at that depth. Exploration of the wreck is very comfortable at temperatures like this. The warmth of these waters has no doubt helped to speed up the corrosion of this steel-hulled freighter. As you can see, large sections of this hull has collapsed. As we swam around the wreck, we had to be constantly aware of the sharp, jagged edges of the corroded metal. It wouldn't take much uh, for any of the uh, jagged pieces to put a good gash in your flesh or possibly damage your equipment, uh, the worst being uh, snagging your air hose and cutting it. That certainly would make for a very bad day. It definitely would be very dangerous for a diver to enter any one of these openings that you see here and uh, explore the interior of the ship with the condition of the metal being in such a fragile, corroded state. But in spite of all this crumbling, what makes this sunken ship such a delight for divers is seeing it slowly transformed into a healthy living reef. It's contributing to the health of the ocean, it's contributing to the health of the planet Earth, and finally it's contributing to our own well-being. The wreck lies in waters that are just offshore from an area called Anse Couchon, which happens to be about two-thirds of the way down the St. Lucia west coast. Anse Couchon actually means in French, uh, Bay of Pigs. But we didn't happen to see any pigs when we were down there. The Leslie M shipwreck uh, did not arrive here through some sort of marine casualty. But instead, it was uh, intentionally sunk here to serve as a marine reef. The ship was built in 1947. But by the time 1986 rolled around, it had served its useful life and was destined for the scrap heap. But instead, in 1986, it was repurposed and given a new life as a reef. The wreck lies on the bottom at uh, 20 meters or 65 feet. Interestingly, the ship was scuttled in 90 feet of water, which was the intended depth that they wanted the ship to lie. They had expected the ship to sink within a few minutes, but instead it took about 30 minutes for the ship to actually sink. And during that time, there was a current which moved the ship over to the, uh, its current location in 65 feet of water. As it turns out, this area was very much in need of a sunken ship to initiate the beginnings of a reef. The surrounding area is just sand and sea grass, as you can very well see. 
The major players in the reef, such as corals, sponges, and sea fans, just cannot get a good footing in the sandy bottom. The sand shifts too easily with waves and current. The corals, you know, the sponges, and the sea fans, they need a solid base on which they can glue themselves. A sandy bottom just can't provide that. But a sunken ship? Well, it can do just that. Then too, the ship provides another feature of a reef. There are all sorts of openings uh, that provide refuge for various sea creatures. Lots of hiding spots to avoid predators. Lots of crooks and crannies for a sea creature to make its home. Originally, Leslie and M had two tall masts uh, one of the masts was towards the bow, and the, the other was towards the stern. You can see one of the masts here in the hold below. It's lying at an angle to the collapsed uh, starboard side. When uh, the ship had settled in 65 feet uh, of water instead of the 90 that uh, was originally intended, the masts had to be taken down. They would have posed a hazard to any of the surface boating traffic that would have been overhead. We're slowly rising up now to the top of the bow, which the sailors call the forecastle. As we reach the top of the bow deck, we find that the sunlight is more intense and brighter now. That's because of our shallower depth. Colors begin to pop out. The colors are becoming more vivid and fascinating to view. What was once a rusting shell of a ship has taken on a new life. It is supporting life and lots of it. I do dare to say that now Leslie Nem is living. It's a living reef. These yellow tube-like structures that we see here are sponges. These are just one of the many types of sponges uh, covering this ship. Sponges are filter feeders, and so they remove particles from the water, improving its clarity. We began our exploration of Leslie and M from the bow starboard side, rounded the stern at the rudder and propeller, and back along the aft port side to swimming over the midsection, finally ending up back at the bow on its top side. And so my dive comes to an end. Much too short. Much more could have been explored. But as I slowly ascend back towards the atmosphere with my fellow divers, I have a last chance to look around and see schools of fish that have made their new reef their home. I have a chance to take a last look at Leslie Nem. I wonder what further transformations will occur in the next several years. How much of the iron shell will disappear as it slowly morphs into the calcium of a real reef? At this time, Leslie Nem is 73 years old. Its last 34 years has been here at the bottom. I like to think that these reef years are the best part of its existence. <laughs>